a rock climbing adventure turns into a nightmare. Falling! After a devastating accident on the face of a 2,000 foot cliff. True stories of ordinary people Help! with an extraordinary will to survive. For cousins Ken Sherbino and Craig Richard, rock climbing is far more than a sport. It's a tie that binds them. Ken and I have rock climbed together since we were children. Although we're technically cousins, he really is my brother to me. Him and I out climbing together, it's just an amazing thing. It's, it's almost hard to put into words. On May 18, 2006, the cousins set out to climb Colorado's Black Canyon one of the most challenging climbs in the state. There's something very, very eerie about the Black Canyon. It gives you this very bewildering feeling like it's, it's another world. The Black Canyon is challenging even before the climbing starts. Most climbs begin at the bottom of a cliff, but here, the cousins have to hike down a treacherous gorge before ascending the 2,000-foot rock face. So pumped to do this. It's pretty heinous. It's completely full of poison ivy and loose rock, and it's notoriously steep. That's like climbing before we climb. After a full day's hike, they reach the cliff base and get their first look at the treacherous canyon wall they'll be ascending. I really had the attitude that we were going into something extremely difficult. It presented a lot of new challenges we hadn't dealt with before, but we were going to conquer it no matter what. Two young climbers, Craig Richard and Ken Sherbino, are attempting to ascend a 2,000-foot rock face in Colorado's Black Canyon. It's one of the most dangerous climbs in North America. Ken and Craig are expert free climbers who use only their hands and feet to pull themselves up by gripping tiny cracks in the rock. Ropes, harnesses, and anchor points are there to catch them if they fall. They must rely on each other to stay alive. In every section of climbing, the lead climber is doing all of the really difficult, physically challenging climbing. Ken and I, we always share the lead climb. Ken takes the lead. It's the most dangerous position because he can fall the farthest. Sorry, buddy, I got you. Craig belays him with the safety rope, so if he falls, it will only be about 40 feet before Craig pulls in the rope to catch him. Once Ken finishes a section of the climb, Craig follows along the same route. We blew up the first four sections of climbing, the first five to 600 feet of the route, and everything went very smoothly. As the sun sets, they make camp on a cliff ledge 600 feet high. I was really stoked to be up there and you know, have this great view of the whole canyon. We had a great dinner, and we bedded down for the night on this nice little ledge, and stars came out, and it was quite a serene sort of situation. The next morning, the cousins start bright and early. They've got more than 1,000 feet to climb. Fueled by fresh legs and high spirits, they power up the rock. We were feeling incredibly strong. I personally was doing climbing moves and things physically with my body that I'd never done before in my life. 200 feet up, they have to carefully cross a band of fragile rock. Their safety rope can give way at any time. You're trying not to let those feelings of what would happen if I slip? What would happen if this anchor pulled? You really are just so focused on doing things one step at a time. Next is the most difficult part of the entire climb, a section that includes some outcroppings that must be climbed under, up, and over. It was 
quite frightening, but at the same time, I had such an overwhelming feeling of confidence. Using every bit of strength and skill he can muster, Craig finishes the section. He's elated and exhausted. I really needed to recuperate. I remember just really relaxing and kind of meditating a little bit. Believing he's fully rested, Craig moves on. But about 15 feet below, Ken is concerned. Stay strong now. I did notice him kind of slowing down. I think that's probably the first sign to me that something might not be good. It might be fatigue or just bad luck, but suddenly, Craig is in trouble. I'm climbing through uh, some rock that is fairly moderately difficult, but nothing that I can't handle. And then just like that, I'm in this awkward position where all of a sudden, I am in a very, very bad spot. He can't find a secure hold. His hands are slipping. Pushed past his limit, his body starts to rebel. Both my legs went into these spasms, and my hands, which never sweat, just started sweating like crazy because my body knew that I was about to peel off the rock. And that one second when I actually knew I was going to come off, I yelled to Ken really loudly, Foley! While ascending a 2,000-foot cliff in Colorado's Black Canyon, climber Craig Richard has reached his physical limit. He no longer has the strength to hold his position on the slippery rock face. Both my legs went into these spasms, and my hands, which never sweat, just started sweating like crazy. And that one second when I actually knew I was going to come off, I yelled to Ken really loudly, Foley! So I brought in as much slack in the rope as I possibly could, and then I braced for impact. Uh, ah! Craig! Oh! Oh, my God. Just this lightning storm of pain just shot up my ankle and my lower leg. Craig, are you OK? Uh. Craig. I examined his leg, and it, it was swelling pretty much immediately. Uh. Careful. It didn't look good. Ah. My very first thought was, oh, I'll just get back up on the rock and start climbing. Maybe I can stand on it. Let me try to help me get up real quick. Okay. Put some weight on it. Oh, no, no, no. There's no way. Suddenly, the climb is no longer about adventure. It's about survival. Craig's leg appears broken. They're low on food and water, stranded, with nobody close by to help them. We both realized that we immediately were in kind of a dire situation. We needed to make decisions fast, and we needed to decide what we're going to do. <laughs> They're marooned halfway up the cliff. Continuing up is impossible, so they must descend and make the incredibly difficult hike out. We had two ropes with us, and the idea was to rappel on those ropes for five or six different rappels. The way we had it worked out is that he would lower himself, and then I would lower myself. See you shortly, brother. Ken lowers himself below Craig so he can support his cousin during the most dangerous rappel of his life. It's a 1,000 feet down to the canyon floor. The process is grueling. And for Craig, it's also incredibly painful. He has to go slow. So what would normally take them 20 minutes ends up taking more than an hour. When you're in a situation like that, and it's an emergency situation, every moment is, is precious. We burned a tremendous amount of time and energy just on that first rappel. And the other rappels are just as difficult. Oh, God, it hurts so bad. Normally, it would be 90 minutes, but it takes them eight hours to reach the canyon floor. Rejuvenated by finally getting off the cliff, Craig decides to test out his foot, hoping it's strong enough for the long hike out of the gorge. 
I very slowly and gingerly put all the weight onto my right foot. And as I do that, I can actually feel the bone separate sideways and just kind of go alongside it and just scrape and tear. And I just immediately toppled to the ground and just incredible, incredible pain. Craig is unable to walk, yet somehow they have to climb out of the 2,000 foot canyon. They're also completely out of food and water. Okay. Yeah. It's an intense, intense situation because we don't know what's going to happen. Climbing in the Black Canyon is an extremely remote sort of situation. There's no chance for rescue. Craig can only hop on one leg, so Ken has to assist him up the steep, unmarked trail. It's slow and treacherous going. Loose rock, boulders, navigating up it is extremely difficult. Use your left leg. There was one part where I reached up for a boulder about the size of my hand, and it was completely loose. And uh, I pulled on it, and it just went shooting behind me, and I started to slide down on my stomach. We were right next to this ledge that was 100 feet down. Absolutely 100%, I would have died if he hadn't grabbed me. Hour after hour, the men inch along, often not sure if they're on the trail. They're exhausted, hungry, and above all, desperately thirsty. I was so dehydrated at certain times, I was hallucinating, and that's when I knew that my body was really kind of in trouble. With Craig on the brink of collapse, the men pass the mouth of a small cave. Oh my God. From inside, they hear a faint but unmistakable water. sound. It's water. <laughs> Hallelujah. I can't believe it. <laughs> that sensation of, of liquid was just like an instant revival to my body. <sighs> it was just like, oh, that is the most amazing thing I've ever tasted in my whole life. That's exactly what I needed. <sighs> Rejuvenated, the cousins forge on. Then, as the dawn breaks, 18 hours after the fall, they reach the top of the canyon. Safety is in sight. It was just elation and it was just tremendous relief as we emerged out of that canyon. <laughs> it, was, uh, it was a beautiful thing. It was like the night time was the time of darkness, was the time of suffering, you know, the time of all of this difficult journey we had to go through, and that when that was over, that we would come back into the light. So the sunrise really signified the end of the endeavor and that we had gotten through. Ken rushes Craig to the nearest hospital, where they learn his leg is broken in two places. But just a few months later, he's back climbing with a cast on. Today, their bond is stronger than ever. The whole ordeal just made us stronger. It just made us closer family members, closer partners. After the Black Canyon experience, I don't think I ever really realized how much he would be willing to do for me in terms of really keeping me alive. 